I don't see any hands raised. Okay, cool. All right, so Web three dot zero, right? What is Web three dot zero? We already talked about it briefly. So internet evolved uh, from wires and networks to static websites. Um, this was Web one dot zero. I'm just recapping a little bit from what we discussed the other day. Um, so you had Google, MSN. So any of you here remember Netscape? Maybe you can use the chat box to type in. Do you, uh, any of you remember Netscape uh, browser? So it, at one point, I mean, at one point of time, uh, you I mean uh, Netscape was a popular browser. Nowadays, it's not. So any of any of you remember what's Netscape? So just for fun, right? So Web 1.0. A uh, lot of these websites, a lot of these browsers that were there at that point of time. So there was Netscape, there was Yahoo, uh, and all of these uh, websites. But predominantly, you had this unidirectional flow of this uh, of this web. So web itself is something that was powerful because until then, we were not able to uh, know what's happening in the rest of the world. Mostly uh, in terms of how connected we were, uh, it was mostly through a website. So somebody got this brilliant idea, um, Linus Torvald, uh, for one guy uh, whom we need to thank for, because they are the ones who conceptualized the initial internet. But at the time, it was very difficult to conceive what the possibilities were. Okay, people were just thinking about okay, website is uh, is the next big thing and you know, Y2K, all these bubbles that happened across. So at that point of time, doing something on the internet was known to be uh, like a like a big thing. Um, like if you have a website, you are, you are some technology guru kind of thing. So that was what um, was Web 1.0. <clears throat> so Google, when it originated around 1998, right? So uh, before that, searching something was not that familiar. There were attempts, um, and because you all are part of the computer science departments uh, in many ways, so you know the importance of binary search. You know the uh, you know there are a lot of search algorithms that are there that were developed over a period of time. So search used to happen mostly with green screen terminals, mainframes, and all of those things. But you know, searching on the web was something that Google started doing. And if, if you were familiar around that time, there was Alta Vista also. There was uh, AOL. Uh, a lot of these things were there at that point of time, right? So um, so that was Web 1.0, but it was predominantly read-only and static. Uh, search came in Web 2.0, so where um, you can do Google searches and all of those kind of things. So mostly Web 2.0 came, and along with that, social networks came. Uh, you know, LinkedIn, Facebook, a uh, lot of these uh, things that came, right? So at this point of time, you are reading and writing to internet. There was cloud-based storage, Dropbox, you know, a lot of these things uh, happened in Web 2.0. But the fundamental uh, problem uh, about, about what was existing at the time of Web 2.0 was like, uh, how do we... Um, how do we trust the information that we were getting, right? So that was one of the problems with Web 2.0. And though blockchain, uh, it's not invented just for this reason, or it, it's not something that was uh, kept for this reason. So mostly uh, what started happening is people who lost trust in the system. I don't know if you know about... Uh, what happened in 2008 and why there was a big deep recession that came. So 2001, when the World Trade Center fell down in US, um, there was a big recession at that point of time. But in 2008, nothing of that sort happened, right? Uh, there was no big building that collapsed, but still, it, uh, I mean, there is no large system uh, that collapsed. But something happened in 2008 that was... Uh, uh, that established a problem that said, how do you trust the information that you're getting? 
and if you want to know more about what happened in 2008 let me type in one movie for you um so you, you people can watch this movie big short okay so if any of if any of you saw batman christian bale uh, so he's the same hero in this movie also but it it explains very very easily how the system was forged okay i think over a period of these four or five days uh, you would have read about non repudiation you know you have talked about immutability provenance double spending and all of these things right so i mean if these words look new to you you can probably ask questions in the chat room uh, but yeah double spending is is what if i gave somebody 100 rupees uh, it is given so tomorrow i don't have another 100 rupees to give right but what happened in 2008 was i gave 100 rupees and then uh, i gave another 100 rupees but originally i only had 100 rupees so it was a lot of uh, inflated value of money that led to the subprime cri- subprime crisis okay how is something that happened in us affecting uh, our lives in india right so uh, so with the global connected world the global economy that is there today of how the money flows right so something that happens in another country is easily affecting us so today if you look at chip shortage for car manufacturers so nothing happened in india but uh, car sales are affected the prices are going up uh, in terms of whatever uh, is the reason so some event that happened somewhere across the world can affect us today and and that's how connected we are on the web right so how do you trust that information that came um, so part of that is web 3.0 uh, but web 3.0 is not a not a single organization web uh, so it's more like all these thing i mean how many of you recognize any logos that are there here can you see what logos are here uh, can you recognize some of them i believe you should be able to recognize this because we talked about so what's this uh, logo just try and guess uh, <laughs> i'm trying to make sure people are not sleeping also so, uh, so see if you can recognize some of these uh, logos this is uh, zcash you know this is metamask uh, tezos ethereum bitcoin so oh, okay each and every logo that's there here represents some some aspect of uh, of the decentralized world right uh, so anyway let's uh, let's move on okay so how is blockchain important in a web 3.0 world and i think this is something that you would all have uh, uh, talked through in these 4 5 days um, but Uh, so what's blockchain in a very very simple term is depicted in this uh, in this picture that you are seeing so it's uh, it's a recipe you can say that is cooked by satoshi uh, so satoshi nakamoto uh, so nobody knows uh, who this uh, gentleman or lady is uh, uh, so it's a fictional name that was given uh, by satoshi uh, right so but what uh, what here she did is wrote a uh, bitcoin white paper but by writing that uh, bitcoin um, and the original concept of the network and uh, for all practical purposes he was active until 2011 well on the internet and tri- driven the most part of what was uh, bitcoin and in in that year 2010 i think somebody paid uh 100000 bitcoins just to get one pizza and the pizza guy accepted so today if you imagine what happened to those 100000 bitcoins and how they traveled across the world today each bitcoin costs about 46 lakh rupees so imagine 100000 bitcoins uh, a lakh of bitcoins uh, that are there to spend today but uh, so uh, we again established that bitcoin or uh, ethereum all of these with virtual currencies are not what blockchain is these are more like what a database uh, blockchain is a database to these virtual currencies but blockchain itself is not a virtual currency so if you extrapolate the uh, concept of blockchain out 
and uh, look at virtual currency as a virtual currency so virtual currency is simply an application but that application is using the recipe that is cooked by uh, in, in, this is just an indicative picture uh, in terms of what is this person doing here right so all of these concepts existed like cryptography existed before merkle tree existed before private key public key existed before but what satosh nakamoto uh, has smartly done is he pulled together all of these concepts and said so this is consensus this is byzantine fault tolerance this is immutability this is programmable smart contracts this is decentralized network this is a distributed ledger peer to peer you know sharing uh, data so all of these came together and became what we call today as uh, blockchain so today what we see as blockchain is a manifestation of uh, what uh, various technologies existed throughout uh, a part uh, of technology and this is called blockchain today okay and like we talked the other day satoshi did not even coin the name blockchain so it was these large organizations like ibm like i i am an ex ibm er so these are large organizations like ibm which came in and said oh this is this technology looks great let's take a part of it and see what we can do with it right so so in 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 essence blockchain is more like a glorified database to many people and uh, what you can see on the right side are technologies that are related to blockchain mining cryptocurrencies wallets and how somebody verifies information um, how transactions can be trusted but after bitcoin ethereum came and you know uh, did a lot more than just virtual currency where they said we are talking about programmable uh, smart contracts that act on their own okay um, we'll talk about some use cases as to how these things are uh, coming together any questions so far feel free to chat uh, type into the chat okay if i'm going too fast or slow or telling something you already know just type it in the chat that you already know about this right so that that's what is the importance of blockchain in in web 3.0 world okay um also most importantly blockchain established um what's called as uh, i mean information security uh, security triad so this is something that is a well versed term within the cyber security expertise right so confidentiality integrity availability these are three pillars of cyber security so blockchain kind of collaborates and you know naturally fits into the cyber security realm of uh, how to make sure information is secure how to make sure we can trust the truth right so cyber se- blockchain is about trust and truth and cyber security is about protecting the truth thereby enabling the trust so in a way all these uh, cryptography that's coming together um, establishes this cyber security right um, so any of you know cap theorem here like um, what i'm showing on the screen so <clears throat> blockchain in a way is also uh, I mean, a large network that's trying to address uh, everybody gets the same data, which is consistency. Um, it's available all the time through hundreds of thousands of nodes. Um, through, I mean, that's what is availability. And partitioning is system continues to expect. Uh, I mean, system continues to work the same way as it is expected to work, even if there is a partial network failure. So, in a way, blockchain has all of all of these ingredients of of cap theory. or cap theorem um, so you can just google to know more about cap theorem right so so some networks are fast some networks are slow there are lightning networks there are side chains uh, you know and beacon chains so there are a lot of things that are there uh, and i think this these few days of of blockchain training that you have got is the tip of the iceberg as to how much more information is there to learn so i'm just trying to drift through all these pictures so that you get a sense of uh, what is happening what we are discussing right um so that's what is in this cap theorem okay um so any any of you recognize the pictures here so this big logo that you see here is polka dot this is ethereum this is atom cosmos uh, you know bitcoin so why we are talking about this right so 
um so in so in today's world uh there are a lot of lot of lots and lots of uh, blockchains right so let's say polkadot is solving one problem uh, ethereum is solving one problem atom is solving one problem bitcoin provides the funds for all of these let's say uh, let's I mean, let's just take a look at an example of trade finance right so how many of you know tra- trade finance uh, i mean uh, can you try to see uh, show some uh, show some hands um, raise your hand if you know about what what is trade finance okay so so this is a picture that is borrowed uh, from world economic forums uh, blockchain so there is a bank you know there is a corporation and there is a consortium of shipping companies okay and there is a forwarding uh, shipping company then there is a terminal at which it is received and there is a shipper so what we are talking about in terms of trade finance is let's say today i need to import a large machinery okay um okay or even more simple today i just want to import like uh, a thousand tons of crude o- crude okay into into my industry which is a refinery let's say for example and i need to purchase it from some company that's there in us right and and i have all these uh, established organization um, that can do this funding and all of that and what happens is let's say it is a thousand tons of oil that is received and i have money to pay for only like 100 tons okay but i have guarantees that remaining 900 tons will be paid for by different different people right what happens in that case is my bank uh, so my bank enables me to get the finance for remaining 900000 meaning what happens is when i need to pay someone in us and pay that through my bank what happens is all of that money is paid for by my bank under the guarantee of the supplies that i uh, that i guaranteed to the bank right so trade finance what happens is whatever amount let's say for these 1000 tons i need to pay 1 million dollars so all that 1 million dollars is paid to the us company which is which has the crude oil that i want to import so they get the payment uh, and the the stock starts to get shipped right so that's where this carrier consortium comes into picture so which carries all of this uh, or crude oil and uh, brings it into a forwarding system right so carrier consortium comes into picture we talk a little more about carrier consortium in in another slide here which is also an, another use case so and this forwarding company takes this and then uh, there is a shipping terminal like vizag port uh, for example so that's where you receive uh, all of this good and from there you sh- you ship it right so in that way uh, you have uh, you have all of this system that's working together so uh, before blockchain also uh, there is nothing wrong you know so before blockchain also this system existed all the payments were happening trade finance was happening but instead of taking a few days uh, for all a few days to a month for all the state finance to work together now it happens in a few minutes and hours like what are whatever are the approvals that are needed to take place here right so but if you see each and every uh, application has their own user interface okay so a bank has a user interface that talks to their core banking system let's say we need to pay 1 million dollars to another company so the banking system comes into picture they have their own set of apis and they have their smart contacts that talk to the distributed ledger right this distributed ledger uh, has a node and it's also possible that the carrier consortium also has a distributed ledger but this distributed ledger uh, is a uh, is a different distributed ledger okay let's say for example here we use ethereum and here we use cosmos it's possible right but uh, in some way all these uh, applications need to talk to each other like for example bank has paid the money so how does 
the trade finance receive uh, that money right so how do we make sure the uh, the respective things happen in the in the trade finance network right so if you see these apis that are there here are talking to each other and these distributed ledger technology also is talking uh, to each other right and from there your carrier consortium is coming into uh, knowledge that yeah bank has paid so let's we can move uh, we can move the transportation ships okay and similarly these apis are also interacting with each other like the forwarding company also has their interaction terminal has an interaction and shipper has an interaction but like we discussed the other day we established the concept of oracle right if you remember what oracle is because blockchain is a system of its own it does not know what's happening in real world right so how how does blockchain get to know uh, that something happened in the real world that a ship has started arrived okay all of these things how do how does blockchain know right so it knows through what we call as oracles right and uh, here you have some uh, apis um so i hope i'm i'm not complicating the stuff api is uh, application programming interface that you have uh, a web service a rest based service um, to i mean through which you can talk to the application right so these apis um, are exposed uh, in every organization right so there are some external apis there are some internal apis by external apis we mean to say there is a third organization that's involved there is a fourth organization that is involved and they need to be able to call our api right so it's not a website but these are applications talking to each other so that's what is depicted here these orange arrows uh, say this is an api gateway okay and there are some distributed ledgers that are there here uh, each can be of different uh, technology right so this is the distributed ledger node this is the uh let's say ethereum node cosmos node uh, hyperledger node you know you have all these technologies uh, that you have are coming together so they are cross authenticating with each other so that data flows securely and safely right so that that's what is this uh, distributed ledger right so all these applications all these blue blocks that you see here are applications that are working in some way or another they all have these user interfaces but if you can see what is happening the beauty of this picture is all apis are talking to each other so that one organization to another organization information is able to flow right and they can verify that by interacting with the distributed ledger as well so uh, so there are oracles there are api gateways uh, you know there is cross authentication all of these things are coming together to enable an end user experience of trade finance so that the the shipper or the consumer who is asking for financing the trade is able to provide the documents on time provide the real time picture of where a uh, certain boat is at certain point of time so all of these are happening um, on on this picture right so in this way in this way you have uh, you have all this network of networks so that's why you see the dialog box here so this is a network of networks this is not one network bank has a network the corporate has a network the consortium has a network forwarder has a network the terminal has a network shipper has a network all of these are different different networks so what is internet internet is a network of networks right so in case of distributed ledger interoperability this is also a network of networks right so these are ledgers talking to each other applications talking to each other and so on and so forth um any question before we move forward so let's change the uh, picture right so all of these distributed ledgers uh, are happening in some way right so before um before uh, distributed ledgers what used to happen is there is a central server and it is connected via the internet to various devices and that is uh, what is web 2.0 in other words right so what started to happen is your uh, decentralized databases 
that that we call as distributed ledgers they exist across internet now so that if uh, so if you remember the other day we talked about uh, peer a peer b peer c so all of them are distributed ledgers right so someone comes and tampers with the information it cannot be easily tampered with that's what is the immutable nature of the application so these devices instead of directly i mean internet is anyway a given in case of a distributed ledger right so it's it's no longer uh, no longer something that is alien to us so internet is is already there taken for granted across all of these applications right so these distributed ledgers exist across the internet and um, that's how the processing happens with them and that's how all these organizations that are talking to each other are able to interact with one another using this system okay so that's what is uh, centralized and decentralized uh, internet that we have here right and uh, just to give you some context this is the sample architecture um, that we already discussed so if you are talking about a distributed ledger a smart contract an api a logistics application and then a ui all of them actually manifest into some kind of an architecture that looks like this the ui layer the middleware layer database layer you know shared ledgers of distributed ledger uh, technology so all of these come together to to provide us with what we actually want to do okay like I, like i said blockchain is more like a uh, recipe that came together and the recipe or the sample sample architecture that you can call is all existing technology is still there blockchain is not going to replace any of them in fact it is not even going to replace your database uh, unless you know uh, you want to put everything on the blockchain itself which is not a smart thing to do because unless you want trustworthy information to be kept on to blockchain you don't need to put everything on blockchain right so if you have a list of uh, countries okay and that's not going to change uh, you don't need blockchain to store a list of countries list of products that's not going to change but how much certain product is available that uh, needs to be trusted right that information needs to be trusted so that can be put on as a transaction on to blockchain so uh, <clears throat> this is where it, it comes into picture right um, just one second uh, okay so that's what is our distributed ledger and uh, like we discussed the other day blockchain is blind you can put any kind of data onto blockchain but uh, it's it's the data that you need to be able to trust so as much as possible you need to use computer vision artificial intelligence internet of things distributed ledger technology together to be able to create an application or a solution that uh, that works safely and securely um, and does not give room for manipulation of data right but blockchain if you give it wrong data it is still on blockchain blockchain does not differentiate between bad data and good data okay that's why it is blind so as people who are putting information onto blockchain we need to realize how do we make sure the entry point into onto blockchain is as safe as it can be right so that's what uh, i mean that's why blockchain is is blind uh, we need to make sure that all all things that can be done together all technologies that can be done together uh, are are taking care of each other's uh, trust right uh, so we already talked about the different types of distributed ledgers we talked about public the distribute when public ledgers we talked about permission we talked about permissionless okay each of them has a uh, you know has a different uh, way of enabling the technology uh, let's say for example if bitcoin uses proof of work ethereum is also using proof of work but wanting to move towards proof of stake right so uh, bitcoin and ethereum are mined uh, and you know each and every day more uh, coins get added or more currency gets added whereas ripple um, is like pre mined okay when whoever invented ripple said okay i'm going to put all these 10 million ripples 
uh, at once uh, i don't need mining here i'm going to use different kind of uh, consensus algorithms so they did it another way hyperledger fabric on the other side which belongs in the permission and uh, private network side so uh, said see i don't really want to call myself as this uh, blockchain so i'm more of more like a distributed ledger right and then iota came into picture and said i'm going to enable more internet enabled sensors and integrations that come into picture and i can provide uh, trustworthy information using whatever smart contracts and other mechanisms that that are there with me to enable a public and a permissionless uh, blockchain so the last uh, known update about iota is they are moving to a coordinator less kind of a network and uh, that's when they can really become a public and permissionless uh, kind of blockchain right so these are the types of distributed ledgers okay and while I, while i was saying bitcoin and ethereum use blockchain uh, so that's the reason why we need to call this as distributed ledger primarily because whatever we are assuming as blockchain is this uh, you know is this uh, linear structure that you have like previous node uh, node number 2 node number 3 4 5 uh, sorry block number 3 4 5 so all of them are connected together but they are like a linked list okay by linear i mean to say you have them expanding one after the other and that's where you need uh, mechanisms like merkle trees to be able to traverse through which block so let's say if rishi uh has like 100 dollars and he is spending 50 dollars out of it then how do i know there are 100 dollars in rishi's account right somewhere on any of these blocks um, that information is available so merkle tree helps us traverse through uh, that data uh, based on i mean those are uh, incredibly complex uh, algorithms that come into picture okay um so let's say uh, you as a college faculty are trying to think okay do i need to know about all of these complications that are there behind um, so the answer is you need not okay you need not know about all the complexity of how uh, merkle tree works if your interest is building solutions on top of blockchain if you are building a blockchain then you need merkle tree but if you are building solutions on top of blockchain like the applications that we just talked about then uh, you don't need to know about merkle tree you don't have to. so today in database uh, there are lots of things within the within the database right rack servers uh, you know uh, high availability all of these okay if your intent is is only to use the database and you leave rest of thing to the database administrator you can think of a blockchain as the same thing right uh are you looking at it from a user point of view or are you looking at it from a building a blockchain point of view and yesterday we have seen uh, day before yesterday we have seen coin market cap where there are about 8400 plus uh, cryptocurrencies that are there on coin market cap right so those are just the list of cryptocurrencies and like we discussed blockchains uh, are not i mean exist outside of cryptocurrencies as well so in real world the applications that are being built on blockchain are way more um, than any of these currencies that you that you see right so if blockchain is this uh, linear structure distributed uh, acyclic graph so i mean you can just google it once uh, i mean once you get some time so the, the dags on the other side um, so iota uses them uh, and there is another algorithm called as hashgraph uh, hedera so they are also something like a distributed as a directed acyclic graph so they also use this so all of this information that exists here uh, are i mean this is known as tip and each uh, so uh, iota uses a interesting concept they don't use something called as proof of work but they use something called as validating reward okay by that what we mean is let's say i want to put a transaction onto iota i need to validate two other transactions that are already existing okay and uh, if i uh, if i do that then i can put my transaction onto the network 
so in this way there is no special reward that is created and there is no proof of work or mining that happens on earth so it's an interesting technology um, that is used by iota so you can look it up uh, in your leisure time my responsibility is more about how do i uh, how do i enable you with the knowledge uh, so we cannot put all the zillions of data that's available on the internet uh, about knowledge of blockchain into you within this 4 or 5 days right but if you know there is something called as directed as cyclic graph you can go look it up you can join these discord networks you can join i mean you can talk to iota coordinators or you can talk i mean you can join these communities that are there uh, which are working all the time from various countries to show you and to to publicize uh, to train to evangelize all the data all the details about the network okay <coughs> so why knowing all of these is important is your solution that you are trying to build may fall into any of these categories are you talking about a group of consortiums um, okay the the one we talked about earlier so are you talking about these carrier consortiums um, where your data needs to be private it should not be exposed beyond these uh, five or six members who are part of the consortium or you are okay to put things on public uh, network so depending on that you will choose the blockchain um, that you want to use so that's why knowing the types of distributed ledgers and placing your solution at some point here um, will help you choose the correct blockchain so otherwise there won't be these many blockchain technologies that are available right these many implementers will not be available these many platforms will not be available so it it would be your responsibility to choose from any of these platforms okay to build solutions for you okay let me take a pause here and see if you, any any of you have any questions all right um ramkish is that uh, mamta ma'am you can let me know if there are any questions uh, so moving on so these are the types of uh, distributed ledgers right so and you need to know about different technologies that exist as well let's talk about some of the prominent implementations of blockchain that exists across the world today okay um so here is one I mean, what you see on the very left is a supermarket store. Uh, so probably you know Walmart. Okay, uh, best price is what it is known as in India, uh, based on their collaborations. So Walmart, um, at some point of time in 2015, uh, realized that there is a particular strain of fungus uh, that's there. in in lettuce which is like a type of cabbage kind of vegetable um that is uh, that is uh, not good okay it's uh, it's a damaged patch of lettuces according to the regulation they should not sell that okay uh, if it is i mean if it is not consumable or it is not good for customer um, they should not sell that but at that point of time they did not know where it originated from uh, uh I mean and which batch of this lettuce was bad so what they had to do across their thousands of stores in in us is they had to throw all of that lettuce out okay forget about the amount of bio biomass that got wasted there but it's also about the amount of revenue that is lost okay if you if you as a consumer think that okay a cabbage a cauliflower cost me like 50 rupees 60 rupees imagine the wholesaler network that has to throw all the produce that they have okay so in a day it would be okay worth more than i mean some 20 30 crores of money that you just are throwing away there right had you known that this place is where it originated from 
then it would be easy to identify okay this is this batch so it went to this store it went to this store and then do something about it right but what happened here is um, when walmart recognized that okay there is some bad batch of lettuce but we are not able to identify then they thought okay uh, there is not much we can do we need to throw it out but how do we make sure that this does not happen again right so so then they started uh, enforcing on all of their suppliers that you need to be there on this blockchain uh, whichever product you are sending to us you need to record it on blockchain which we will also verify and you know they are built they have built um, this uh, form to blockchain uh, network <coughs> right so walmart tracks this today so another example um, that was uh, trying to quote is trade lens so this is a platform that is uh, that is built by mersk so if you see shipping lines um, especially if you go to uh, like like wyzak beach or you know you can go to any of the uh, terminals ports uh, across the world mersk is one of the globally renowned uh, shipping companies okay and if you don't know um, what happens um, at uh, at these shipping lines is they need to provide uh, the proof of trail that okay i have come from mexico i brought crude oil okay i have come from united states i bought uh, t-shirts okay i have come from uh, ghana and i bought wheat so let's just say these are all the shipping ships that stand outside for for local context let's say they are standing outside wyzak ports in the in the sea and what happens is the port authority takes their own time to be able to verify that okay did singapore port uh, send this uh, uh, i mean it did the customs of singapore port authorize okay so there are bill of lading lot of lot of things are there and each and every case study uh, has its own depth right so just talking about it briefly so all of this paper trail needs to be verified and today before I mean, not today but before mars implemented this trade lens platform all of this was manual okay and uh, sometimes the ships had to wait Three to four days outside in the sea uh, to gain entry into the port, right? So it's not like uh, toll gate where the ship come, I mean, where your car goes and you swipe your fast tag and you get charged. Uh, so that's just simple transport, right? But in case of ships, they need to verify a lot of things, lot of regulations, regulated materials. All of these things need to be taken care of. So trade lens, um, what it did is it digitized. um so you can say that okay uh, this uh, problem can be solved without blockchain also but what mersk did is uh, so there are two kinds of solutions which people al- always look at right so one is called as greenfield solution another one is called as a brownfield solution so you can see this greenfield brownfield being used in the name of names of airports also by this uh, what they really mean is greenfield means you have an open canvas you can plan what whatever you can you can do if it is a technology solution you are talking about nothing of that sort exists today uh, you are building a brand new application right so you are building a brand new airport that's why they are called greenfield um, so brownfield uh, in this case what happens is something already exists you are trying to improvise enhance and migrate all of that exists and move on to something else but uh, Mersk was trying to solve a problem that is more brownfield in nature, right? So, what they did is um, they enabled all of this paper trail digitally, um, you know, and then asked for few ports to participate in the network. Asked for few few shipping companies, logistic manufacturers to participate in this network, and people happily jumped on uh, to this solution, primarily because if it is if I am a shipper. and my ship is standing outside the port for 4 days i am paying for all the 100 crew members that is that are there on that ship i am paying for uh, the cost of running the ship i am paying for the diesel and i am paying for 
the international license cost so lot of factors right so just to keep the uh, ship standing outside the port let's say it cost me 30 lakh rupees a day right uh, just some example right would i want to lose 1.2 crore rupees uh, by waiting outside the sea or would i want to participate in a network of solution that can help me do that right so that's where trade lens by mars came into picture and uh, so uh, this is also enabled on blockchain you can look up all of these solutions so similarly jp morgan did something uh, on a blockchain powered network right and all these swift transactions that happen on the uh, i mean if you don't know swift swift is a international standard that is uh, ag agreed upon by uh, banks uh, like Re Re reserve bank uh, each country has their own kind of banks right so they all enable to participate on a on a swift network so globally all these banks participate uh, on this swift network so if you need to send money from us to india india to us uh, dubai to india india to dubai so any of these international transactions that you need to do so you uh, you need to participate in this swift network okay um, let me take a quick pause unless uh, you have any questions we can move forward I'm assuming no questions, so let's move on. So similarly, there are some uh, ongoing implementations of blockchain. Switzerland's uh, stock exchange is trying to put their stock trades here. Tracer uh, is the, is being used by DBS Group to track diamonds because it's a precious commodity, right? Diamond is a precious commodity. And to be able to verify the authenticity of a particular diamond, it's important. So Tracer is being used. Allier Bank uh, is starting to integrate all their official documents um, using blockchain. Okay. So in this way, there are several ongoing implementations, right? So, so this is what is happening across the world. Uh, so let's also examine, um, is blockchain the go-to solution for every application that's being built, right? So every solution that we are building is blockchain, the necessary part of uh, all of these solutions, right? So, so that's when we need to ask ourselves, is every solution needing blockchain, right? So the answer to that, I don't know what's there on your mind, but blockchain is not a silver bullet, okay? The, the name silver bullet is used in case that it can be used for any anything okay blockchain is not for every solution that exists right so it's not like take everything that's there in web 2.0 and do, uh, put block put them on blockchain and call it web 3.0 not like that right so do not use blockchain if you don't think it is necessary to implement blockchain in the first place okay and uh, so do not decide to implement blockchain first and then think about a business solution. Look at your business solution, then think about whether blockchain should become part of it or not. So business problem always comes first. Okay. On the right hand side, you can see there is a tree which asks a few questions. Is there a need for a shared common database? Um, so in case of the first example that we took, um, let's say the shipping company you know, the, the banks, um, all of these uh, organizations that are working with each other, if they decide that there is no need for a shared common database, then do not implement blockchain, right? So only if the answer to that is yes, move forward, but there are uh, subsequent, I mean, this is called a due diligence, right? So uh, every, every green arrow that you see is yes, uh, go forward. Every red arrow that you see is no, reevaluate the decision. So that's what is happening here. Uh, so reevaluating uh, the decision is needed at every step. So if the answer is no, reevaluate re the need. Are multiple parties involved? If the answer is no, do not use blockchain. Do, do the parties involved have conflicting incentives? 
uh, and uh, mistrust to each other then uh, i mean if the answer is yes only then move forward if the answer is no don't don't use blockchain are there differences in rules um, that govern these parties if the answer is no do not use is there a need for an objective unchangeable log of records then uh, go forward otherwise don't no need do the rules behind transactions really rarely change if the answer is yes only then go forward if not uh, reevaluate so all of these if the answers are yes then these are suitable use cases uh, for blockchain now similar tree is developed by world economic forum um, so what you see here uh, is like if you are trying to remove intermediary or I mean so blockchain's popular use case is disintermediation okay by dis disintermediation what we are what we are saying is uh, we are removing the brokers uh, of non essential value right so if you are removing them uh, if the answer is yes then move forward are you working with digital assets versus physical assets if the answer is yes move forward right so in this way i think you can understand that can you create a permanent authoritative record the answer is yes do not use blockchain right so here if you see all of these are saying do not use blockchain do you require high performance rapid transactions blockchain cannot do this effectively it's still being you know performance wise it's still being improvised do you intend to store large amounts of non transactional data part of the solution the answer is uh, no then blockchain research may further be needed do you want to so in this way uh, there are lots and lots of these questions so once i share this uh, ppt uh, with you guys uh, maybe you can go through them in detail and, and see when when blockchain is needed to be used and when it's not to be used so i mean especially in the academy what happens is uh, to learn some technology it's good to learn but again when you are applying uh, we need to be able to do enough research to say whether solution is needing blockchain or not <coughs> okay and also always uh, one second so always try and remember this piece right so blockchain is augmenting what you already have in the solution it's it itself is not the solution so you already have your uh, user interfaces middleware and database layers but uh, whether you need blockchain you need to use these decision trees to be able to decide uh, how to how to move forward right so with, with that said uh, let's see if there are any questions and uh, that brings uh, that brings to a conclusion most of whatever i'm i'm trying to share here um, if there are any any details that you uh, want to know more about um, we can talk about uh, them okay so while you try to think about uh, putting together um, your mind to uh, ask questions so just a little bit about decentrum so we are a group of seven people um, so these are all uh, the people including me um, so we all co-founded this community together so we do cohorts that look like this uh, like a few meetups um, like level set foundation and concepts then real world use case selection and uh, architecture and scoping decisions and then uh, building a solution by collaborating with each other and then concluding with the with the large scheme workshop um, so we'll be doing a hackathon also uh, soon by working with another organization these are some of the use cases that we have built all of them are available on git uh, repository so krishi chain good chair block identity management cold chain and uh, smarter law violation prevent, uh, prevention system and the uh, decentralized economy so all of these are um, something that uh, we are part of and i mean like i have already mentioned uh, so krishi chain is something that's close to close to our heart also i am very connected to the cause of farming so 
uh, we are trying to make sure the farmer gets uh, their due credit in terms of the price. Um, so probably it's not hard for you to think that the tomato or the potato that you buy from your nearest uh, vegetable outlet, you might pay them 40 rupees, 50 rupees, but the farmer who has uh, who has spent a lot of energy uh, to, to produce something, uh, like producing a tomato takes two to three months, uh, and a lot of care and nurturing for the for the plants. So a farmer spends a lot of time on the forum um, to to create something of value, but he's paid just five rupees out of the forty rupees, fifty rupees that he pay. And uh, uh, it it's not the farmer that benefits; it's the intermediaries that uh, that benefit from all these sales. So we need to do our part in how do we solve the problem and anyway connecting that uh, idea is what is Krishi chain so it's a distributed uh, autonomous marketplace for trading of agricultural communities uh, so so yeah that is about decentrum uh, unless you have any questions let's talk about what we can do in terms of the next steps but let's let me take a pause here and see what you all are trying to say <clears throat> so, Rikha, ma'am, you asked about uh, some more insights on Tangle. Uh, let me see what what's there. So I just bought up one of the uh, old presentations that we did for Tangle. Let me see what I can share for you. So here is a slide and let me come back to that in a little bit. So let's just talk about directed acyclic graph right so the difference in case of uh, directed acyclic graphs is uh, they are not linear in nature so collection of what i mean what is called uh, as a directed acyclic graph is this is a collection of vertices and edges right so what is a vertice uh, this is the transaction uh, that's there okay this is more like a data structure edges are like uh, these arrows that are going out, these tips are unapproved transactions. So for example, uh, it started uh, from six and went to zero. Let's say that for an example, right? So more transactions that are, uh, that are getting validated. Uh, so more, uh, you know, more authentic information exists on the network without spending a lot of, uh, you know, uh, a lot of uh, energy and expending like uh, like proof of work right so when a new transaction joins the tangle it chooses to uh, two previous transactions to approve so in that way iota strategy is uh, is kind of uh, energy uh, conserving that way you don't have to spend a lot of money and also the mathematics that is there behind tangle um, helps make sure that uh, the the technology takes care of all the data that is coming on to the network. Uh, I'll see if I can share with you some IOTA references. So meanwhile, feel free to ask any questions. I'm just pasting 
the reference for IATA. Uh, you can go through them, uh, get some more details on Tango. Okay. Uh, so I hope that answers to the question to a certain extent. Uh, so you all can join uh, the Decentrum Telegram group by going to this link. So it's a shortened URL. Uh, so bit.ly, DC Telegram group. Uh, if you type that in your browser, you'll be taken to a web page that, uh, that can help you join the group. But only if you are serious about pursuing blockchain as a, I mean, as a, as an important technology, you can join this. Otherwise, uh, you would not get much benefit from the group. Okay. Also, if you want to know more uh, about blockchain, there are some podcasts that we can recommend. Unchained is one of those podcasts. A sixteen Z, another podcast, right? So, uh, I mean, I believe you listen to one or the other podcast these days. So you can listen to these podcasts to gain some more uh, knowledge. Um, and eventually, I think uh, whether it is academic projects or whether it is a research project that you'll be working on with the students, um, you probably will be building a solution with blockchain in the mix. Um, so remember, I'm, I'm not saying a blockchain solution. I'm saying building your solution with blockchain in the mix because there are no blockchain applications. There are applications where blockchain can be used. So there is that subtle difference of understanding about blockchain. Um, that you can use to make sure uh, your solutions are built for business, not just for proving some technology exists. And uh, more often than not, what happens in blockchain world is somebody starts that, oh, blockchain is a great technology, let's use it, and then eventually realize that it's not fitting into their, uh, their solution. So it's better always to do a workshop kind of a thing identifying whether we need to use blockchain or not then jumping onto blockchain and then deciding okay what's the business problem okay so uh, it is for that reason only i shared all of these uh, use cases that that we have built on blockchain where for each and every step we identified uh, that whether blockchain is the correct solution or not right so that's the reason why i showed you examples of where blockchain is being used and uh, you know uh, and show detail you about what is happening here in terms of this trade finance platform as well of course it requires some domain knowledge understanding to build the solution but yeah if you are if you are choosing um, something for for your students i think uh, you can i mean i i think you are better equipped now um, to decide whether or not to use blockchain <laughs> don't just use it for the fancy of it uh, but also in terms of what are the types of ledgers that are available how to use what to use when to use um, so so yeah uh, this is uh, i believe this is going to help you um, let's hope so any any other uh, questions Sir, uh, very nice session, sir. Mm. Actually, Thank you, sir. I have one doubt, sir. Regarding API gateways, mm. somebody is uh, wantingly uh, inserting some uh, SQL injection attacks and all over the okay. uh, Bitcoins, uh, that kind of blockchain uh, uh, process. So how mm. do we identify the that injection attacks and all? Um, S S SQL injection was a very old uh, technique in terms of uh, in terms of hacking networks, sir. You have techniques already available to avoid these SQL injections. Mostly in today's world, if you are talking about REST APIs uh, that are using put and get and get and post, so even if somebody tries to inject, there are libraries that are available today. Whether you use blockchain or not, that's a different thing. But uh, there are libraries that are available uh, today uh, that can avoid these kind of attacks on the on the APIs. Uh, so this is called as uh, pen testing, so penetration uh, testing. So usually most blockchains, they undergo this pen testing kind of a thing if they plan it properly. And, uh, and then these attacks can be avoided. 
and also if you if you try to look at uh, the vulnerabilities as such uh, vulnerability is not on the blockchain because blockchain is built for that kind of security but it happens on the exchanges and the entry points that come and put data on to blockchain i hope i answered your question properly yes sir yes sir actually the my um, uh, my students uh, did uh, did the various projects on malicious activities on uh, uh, okay uh, the environment threat environment <laughs> so where we can uh, having many libraries like regarding blockchain uh, library and all uh, hmm. the people are intention is to adding the um strange uh, uh, kind of spyware programs or social engineering attacks on uh, this kind of uh, chain so definitely hmm. there is a a uh, huge tr- huge change happened na so even uh, if we have a strong uh, security perimeter mm-hmm. over the blockchain process some kind of uh, uh, strength is happened from uh, black, black hacker or gray hackers mm-hmm. that is a uh, thing, uh, uh, i would like to adding uh, the question uh, in your finally your question is excellent sir thank you sir thank you very much thanks so much sir um, so uh so i mean how much amount of vulnerability testing that we do there is always continuous improvement within the technology world that hacking improves every day and applications also need to improve every day uh, so it's a continuous effort to make sure the application is secure sir yes sir correct correct sir it is a continuous improvement over the network sir today organizations are spending a lot of money to make sure their applications are secure because once something wrong happens uh, it's difficult to be win back the credibility from the customer so they are always on continuous path uh, to make sure their networks are secure but more often that than not it is not the corporates uh, who uh, are building applications on blockchain it is also individuals like you and me uh, who are forming like small teams like 3 to 4 people and thinking about one picking a problem to solve uh, for a business and then starting um, their own you know with with all web 3.0 it's not within with large corporates it is with small groups of people who have, who are smart enough to put a solution together to build something so uh, that that's what is web 3.0 right so a lot of these networks came together like five member team 10 member team 15 member team so very small groups of people not large organizations that are doing this large organizations are mostly sticking to hyperledger fabric or besu or any of these things but not really ethereum they don't want their data to be there on public chains because they fear that at some point uh, if quantum computing comes into picture all of these things can be hacked and you know uh, data can be obtained from them so mostly corporates are not preferring hyperledger uh, i mean not preferring public uh, blockchains however uh, the the concern about quantum computing try i mean uh, coming into picture and uh, you know and being able to hack the old data that exists even blockchain platforms themselves are improving over a period of time for example iota uh, also if you take as an example they are building quantum resistance uh, quantum resistant algorithms to to enable their blockchains uh, yes sir yes sir correct correct sir, correct actually uh, i dealt the various subjects on cyber security okay so uh, i observed the one point sir regarding uh, um, uh, ex employees and employees are dangerous to the particular corporate company mm. because they did the things intentionally Correct. to make it uh, more worse uh, mm. <laughs> regarding hardware resources or software resources or uh, application programs so that the danger happens from the ex employees even right. we were right. saying the team work uh, even mm. one person is uh, uh, not satisfied about the, their money and all mm. definitely they did uh, uh, some kind of compromisation on a particular computer na sir mm. so right. that is a thing that's mm. a, that's a, it is a 0.001% um things will happen <laughs> so, yes, thank you sir. very much thank you thank you for your kind information welcome sir welcome